The Soviet MiG-15 fighter proved to be a menace that the United States wasn't ready to take on. In an effort to create an aircraft that could beat the Soviet fighter jet, the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation started to redesign its existing fighter aircraft, the F-9 Cougar. In line with Grumman's tradition of naming their carrier-based fighters after felines, the Navy chose the name Tiger for the F-11F. This aircraft showed promise from its maiden flight, where it almost achieved Mach 1 speed. The Tiger was also the second Navy aircraft to later reach supersonic speeds. In fact, this aircraft was so fast, it managed to shoot itself down. In the early 1950s, the Cold War was already in full swing, and the Soviets appeared to have an advantage in fighter plane technology over their American counterparts. The USSR had just debuted a new aircraft, the MiG-15. This new fighter had a design that no one had seen before. Its swept back wingspan allowed it to fly as fast as the speed of sound. The MiG-15 was also incredibly effective against all the fighters from that era. The U.S. Navy urgently needed to figure out how to beat it, to protect its carrier ships. Luckily, the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation was attempting to do just that. In 1952, the company started to privately fund a new initiative to modernize the Cougar a carrier-based fighter aircraft used extensively by the Navy and Marine Corps from 1951 to 1974. The project received the designation tag G-98. Grumman sought to improve the area rule, a design technique that helps reduce an aircraft's drag while flying at supersonic speed. However, it soon became apparent that this model would need a lot more than a redesign. The prototype's new wing had a set of full-span leading-edge slats. Its new trailing-edge flap incorporated roll control, achieved using spoilers, instead of the more traditional ailerons. For storage on aircraft carriers, the plane's wings were manually folded on a downward angle. Since the aircraft was planned as a supersonic vehicle, the tailplane was all moving. This new aircraft's fuselage was now in a cylindrical shape, with a single triangular-shaped vertical tail. The all-flying horizontal tailplane was mounted low on the rear fuselage. The engine chosen for the G-98 was the Wright J-65, a license-built version of the Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire engine, fed by a pair of air intakes mounted on the fuselage sides just after the cockpit. The cockpit itself was located on the front of the nose, and covered by a rearward sliding canopy. By the spring of 1952, the G-98 project had evolved into a completely different aircraft that bore no resemblance to the Cougar. When the Navy Bureau of Aeronautics read the G-98 proposal, they were impressed, especially by its potential for supersonic performance and reduced transonic drag. On April 27, 1952, the Navy ordered two prototypes and a static test airframe model. Even though this new model was quite different from the F9F7 Cougar, the Navy assigned the designation XF9F8 to the new project. To further add to the confusion, the prototypes, 
were then redesignated XF9F9. The previous designation went to another derivative of the Cougar. After the first tests with rocket-launched scale models were successful, the Navy felt confident enough with the model and ordered 42 service tests and initial production aircraft. In the summer of 1954, the first flying prototype became available. However, its J-65 engine was not, and another engine model had to be fed inside the plane for the test trials. The model flew for the first time on July 30th, 1952, with test pilot Corwin Meyer at the controls. And despite not using the preferred engine, this aircraft almost achieved Mach 1 on its very first flight, further increasing the Navy's hopes in the potential of the design. The second prototype flew for the first time on October 2nd, 1954, and became the second U.S. Navy aircraft to reach supersonic flight. The first one to achieve such accomplishment was the Douglas F-4D Skyray. In April of 1955, when the Navy finally admitted that the Tiger was not an upgraded Cougar, the aircraft received a new designation, F-11 F-1. Carrier trials began on April 4, 1956, when an F-11 F-1 Tiger landed on and successfully launched from USS Forrestal. The Navy and Grumman chose the name Tiger for the F-11F, in line with the tradition of adopting feline names for Grumman-designed carrier-based fighters. The Tiger served aboard several carriers, such as the USS Bonhomme Richard, Forrestal, Intrepid, Ranger, and Saratoga. In 1954, when the Tiger made his debut, the Vought F-8U Crusader also entered Navy service. However, the differences between the two aircraft quickly became apparent. Even though the Tiger was faster than the Crusader at sea level and had better handling characteristics, the Tiger was almost 300 miles per hour slower than the Crusader at 35,000 foot heights. The Tiger had a slower initial climb rate and the Crusader's combat range was appreciably better. In addition, the Wright J-65 engine wasn't exceptionally reliable and had already reached its fully optimized potential by the time it was belatedly installed on the Tiger. Despite its initial enchantment with the Grumman Aviation model, the Navy canceled further contracts for additional Tigers and canceled the model's planned reconversion before any prototypes could be built. In the end, only 199 F-11 Tigers were produced before the cease of production. The last Tiger was delivered to the Navy on January 23, 1959. With the cancellation, Grumman had no Navy fighters in production for the first time in its history. The Tigers were phased out by other models, and in April 1961, the aircraft was withdrawn from carrier operations. Following its Navy service withdrawal, the Tiger was used as a training aircraft in the early 1960s. After the 1962 Act of the United States Tri-Service Aircraft Designation System, the fighter, previously known as F-11F, simply became the F-11. The last Tigers were retired in the summer of 1967, with the survivors being transferred to the Boneyards at the Military Aircraft Storage and Disposition Center in Arizona.
the F-11F Tiger never got to shoot its ammunition in battle, and a particular test proved that was probably for the best. On September 21, 1956, test pilot Thomas Atridge was aboard an F-11F Tiger, making a shallow dive at Mach 1 speed, in an exercise meant to test the aircraft's four 20mm cannons with two short bursts. Everything seemed normal until Atridge got to the end of his dive. While at a 7,000 foot height, the pilot felt something strike his canopy glass in one of his engine intake lips. The F 11F Tiger began to lose power, and the pilot decided to head back to base to land it before something went wrong. But to make it back safely without shattering the Tiger's canopy, Atridge had to maneuver the aircraft down into a crawl. This way, the engine would only produce 78% of its average power, and at that rate, he wouldn't be able to make it back in time. Only two miles away from the runway at the base, the Tiger's engine went out completely. Instead of bailing out, Atridge quickly attempted to crash land into some trees. However, his decision meant that the plane would catch up with its own burst of 20mm fire. The low pitch of the aircraft and bullet's trajectory, as well as the Tiger's descent at half the speed of sound, located it right into the gun's target area. As the plane ripped through the woods, it was impacted by its own projectiles on its windshield and the right intake. The aircraft's nose cone was broken, and the right wing was ripped off gouging a path of destruction of over 300 feet long. After the crash, the fuel ignited, and Attridge had to cut himself free of his life rat's lanyard. Amazingly, the pilot survived and only suffered a broken leg and three broken vertebrae. A Sikorsky S-58 helicopter directly dispatched from the Grumman factory picked up Attridge and carried him away to receive medical care at Central Suffolk Hospital in the town of Riverhead. The brave pilot spent two weeks hospitalized, but made a full recovery. Initially, Attridge thought he had flown into a bird, and it wasn't until later that he realized his plane had been hit by its own fire in only 11 seconds. During the test, the speed of the F-11F Tiger proved to be counterproductive as the aircraft caught up with the projectiles, which is how the F-11 Tiger made history as the first fighter to shoot itself down. Besides the embarrassing title earned after Atridge's test flight, the F-11F Tigers became famous as the Blue Angels Flight Demonstration Team's official mount for over a decade. In April 1957, the team acquired several short-nosed Tigers, but eventually traded them for long-nosed ones. The aircraft soon became an icon in Blue Angels air shows all across the nation. When the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation and the U.S. Navy produced the film The Navy's Blue Angels in 1966, the F-11F Tigers were heavily featured. The Blue Angels performed 23 precision standard tactical maneuvers, some while only 36 inches apart from each other. Six planes and pilots, along with a crew of 45 maintenance workers, would ensure the successful execution of 80 shows a year all over America. Twelve years after their introduction to the flight demonstration team, they were replaced by the more modern McDonnell F-4J Phantoms in 1969. In 1973, two Tigers that had previously been used by the Blue Angels were taken from storage and modified by Grumman to work as test beds to evaluate in-flight thrust control systems. The tests were carried out by Grumman from 1974 till 1975. 
Following the completion of the trials, the tigers were returned to storage. These were the last tigers to ever fly, ending the promising yet short-lived career of these carrier-based fighters. In 2005, a tiger was acquired to be restored and display the markings of the U.S. Navy Squadron VF-21 of the Atlantic Fleet. This restoration was completed in 2011.